Nintendo just released a brand new trailer and some images for Pokemon X and Pokemon Y Into the Wild, and you know what that means. It's time to start the old analysis machine and see what secrets they might be hiding. Now, I know we say this a lot, but the trailer itself doesn't actually show that much that's new. But fortunately, Nintendo also revealed some new information, including a picture of the world map they will also be analyzing. And to do so, we again consulted our resident Pokemon master, Derek Bidner, to uncover every secret Pokemon X and Pokemon Y might be hiding. But before we start, please make sure to check out our previous analysis if you haven't already, as we'll be referring to it throughout the video. And with that, let's get started. So the trailer opens up with another look at the game's main town, which we now know is called Lumio City, in the region of Kalos. And it appears to be far larger than any city in any of the previous Pokemon games. And if we take a look at the regional map, we can see the city is located smack dab in the middle of the area. And that's for good reason, as it appears the region was designed using a hub and spoke model as a base, with routes that radiate outward from the city center toward different destinations along the region's perimeter. In fact, if you've been to Disneyland, then you already know how this works. And Lumia City even has its own version of Disneyland's castle at the very center in the form of an iconic tower. So based on this, it appears you'll be visiting Lumia City frequently throughout the adventure, as you'll likely pass through it on your way to many of the region's destinations. Now we've already mentioned in our previous analysis that the tower bears a suspicious resemblance to the Eiffel Tower, suggesting a heavy French, if not general European, influence. And this is reinforced by most of the city's citizens wearing berets, which are commonly associated with France and other European countries. And check this out! If we compare the region's map to that of France, we can see that the two look remarkably similar in shape, right down to the ocean on the left and land to the right. Now interestingly, in a recent press release, Nintendo referred to this region as also being in the shape of a star, albeit a crudely drawn one. But what's interesting about this is that a star has five points, and if you look at Lumio City, it appears to have five circular areas that might mark five different routes that radiate outward. And if we take a look at this gameplay clip from the trailer, we can see the trainer entering the city through what appears to be one of those paths. But did you catch the number on the wall marking it as Path 5? That might indicate that not only are there five paths in total, but it might also be referring to the route number, meaning routes 1 through 4 all lead from the city as well. Now let's get back to that map, as it reveals a ton of potential details about your journey through the Kalos region. Some of which, we admit, are kind of obvious, like this giant desert just west of town. But did you notice this is the same desert revealed in the previous trailer, right down to the three dome structures? Now before, we speculated this might be some kind of lab or research facility. And while that may still be true, the map hints that it might be something else. Because it appears that one of those dome structures is actually built on top of a lava pool. Maybe it's harnessing it for geothermal energy. And those nearby wind turbines sure do seem similar to those used in real life to generate electricity. Could we actually be looking at a power plant? Or maybe a research lab that requires vast amounts of energy. But regardless of what it is, at least you know where it is. And that's not the only scene from the previous trailer we can place on the map. Do you remember this Riverside clip? Well, based on the placement of the flowers, it appears to take place here in the southwest. And then there was this clip of the same girl leaving a large mansion. Based on the bridge, we think it's taking place here in the southeastern location. But it's not only the old locations that we can place. In the new trailer, we got a glimpse of a small town area with a fountain, which appears to take place to southeast of the city based on the similarly colored buildings, and yes, even that same fountain in the center. So that about covers it for the locations shown so far that we can confidently place. But what about all the locations on the map that we haven't seen yet? We think we may have some ideas of what they have in store for us. First up, let's take a look at this tiny town to the north. We have a sneaking suspicion this might just be where you start your game, based on this tiny footprint and isolated location. If we're right, you'd probably start off in one of the four buildings here, and then meet with the professor at his lab in what could be the northern building here to get your first Pokémon. And by the way, did you notice a large tree here with a giant clock built into it? We can't help but wonder that clock might actually display the real time, meaning that the real time clock from past games might be returning as well, where the world would change depending on the time you're playing the game at. But along those same lines, we don't think the seasons are returning, and here's why. Did you notice this area appears to be themed to the autumn season? Well, if we look around the map, we can see the other three seasons are represented too. We have summer with a desert and beaches, winter with a snow-covered area to the east, and spring in the flower-rich southwestern area, which is a level of diversity we haven't seen before in a Pokemon game outside of actual seasons, which would make their presence a little redundant if not confusing if they were actually here. Okay, that's enough about seasons, let's look at some more of the nearby areas. There appears to be a windmill in that winter area we just mentioned. Could that be home to the ice gym? And if we look at the opposite side of the map, we can see a cathedral-like structure that bears a suspicious resemblance to the Notre Dame. We can't help but wonder this might be where this clip from the first trailer takes place due to the high ceilings. Could this be the fire gym? And just south of that is a strange Stonehenge-like structure, which further suggests that France won't be the only European influence on the game's world. Now let's take a look at this mysterious mountain castle to the east. Could this be the location of the Elite Four? 
It's pretty out of the way, and this path leading up to it might just be Victory Road, but we're really just guessing. Finally, if you look close, you might have noticed a bunch of caves throughout the map. But did you see the one here along the shoreline? If that indeed is a cave, then that likely means that the surf ability, which allows you to ride a water-type Pokémon, is back too. And speaking of riding Pokémon, one of the clips in the trailer shows the trainer riding one of the newly announced ones, Go-Goat, through the city. Now according to a recent Nintendo press release, it seems you'll only be able to do this in specific parts of the city. But why? After all, the first trailer already confirmed you all have roller skates to get around faster. What's the purpose of riding a Pokémon? Maybe you'll have to ride them to get to certain parts in the city. Or maybe there are events that require you ride them, like a race. We're really not sure. But it seems that riding Pokemon through town isn't the only change in how you'll be getting around. If we take a look at some of the latest screenshots, we can see the trainer appears to be facing diagonally, which if you've played previous games in the series, then you know is a pretty mind-blowing addition, as you've historically been locked to a grid and only able to move in the four primary directions. In fact, if we take a look at this clip from the trailer, we can see the trainer adjust his running path ever so slightly, further suggesting that he might have full freedom of movement. And that's not the only thing you might have more control over. Now we've already pointed out in a previous analysis that the camera appears to be far more dynamic than before, but the new trailer hints at the fact that you might actually have some control over it too. Take the opening scene for example, where the camera starts on your profile but then eventually pans upward. In Pokemon Black and White, the camera only changed when you move between areas, or during specific situations, so it's possible to actually be controlled by the user here. Especially because many of the camera angles featured here appear to be far too cinematic to actually be playable. Look, that poor girl's gonna run into something because the player can't even see where she's going, which means these probably aren't automated. And by the way, did you notice how the girl looked at the coffee shop as she walked past? It seems that trainers will automatically look towards points of interest, similar to Link in the Zelda games, which is a cool addition. Okay, that's enough about the city, let's talk about the Pokémon themselves. First up, we have the three starters that we already knew about before, Chesspin, Fennekin, and Froakie. But thanks to the new images, we now know a little bit more about them, specifically what their starting moves are and the moves they'll be learning early on. For example, the moves that Chesspin will be starting with or learning early on are Tackle, Growl, Vine Whip, and Rollout. Similarly, Fennekin's setup is Scratch, Tail Whip, Ember, and Howl. And then we have Froakie with Pound, Growl, Bubble, and Quick Attack. So that covers it for the old and new Pokémon, but let's take a look at the new, new Pokémon. First up we have the normal electric type, Heliptile, who we see here using Parabolic Charge, which is a new move that attacks everything nearby and then restores Heliptile's health by half the amount of damage inflicted. So that seems handy. Next up is Fletchling, a normal flying type who we see here using Flame Charge, which not only inflicts damage but makes him faster each time too. Then there's the adorable Pancham, a fighting type seen here using Parting Shot, which decreases your opponent's attack and special attack effectiveness, while also allowing Pancham to swap out with another Pokémon during the battle. And finally, there's a the Grass type, Go-Goat, not to be confused with the delicious type, Go-Gurt. Here we see him using Horn Leech, which allows him to deal some pain while recovering half of that damage back as health. Whew! And that covers it for all the actual Pokémon shown in the trailer. Though did you notice a statue in the fountain in this clip appears to be of Rosalia? Yep, seems she's back too, as well as her evolution types. And while we're on this image, it looks like there's a gym in the background here too. Oh, and if you look at this artwork from the official website, we can see that it appears Meryl will be back as well. Okay, now even though she wasn't shown, there's still one more new previously announced Pokémon I want to talk about. Sylveon, which is a new Eevee evolution. And the reason I want to talk about her is because she's so damn mysterious. After all, the official website hasn't even listed her type yet. But we think we have an idea of what it might be, and it might have some deep implications. Now it's been theorized by some fans that she's actually part of a brand new type of Pokémon. The Fairy type. She is pink after all. But we think we now have some solid evidence. If we take a look at every other Eevee evolution, we can see that their names all follow the same structure. Descriptive term plus Eon. The Fire ones, Flare Eon. The Water one, Vapor Eon. The Grass one, Leaf Eon. And so on and so forth, Eon. But what about Sylveon? What could the Sylve part actually mean? Well, nothing as it turns out, it's not actually a word. But, it sure sounds like another word that's spelled pretty similarly, and that word is Sylph. And its definition is a mythological elemental being that inhabits air, and has even been referred to as Fairies of the Air. Sounds to us like we might have our first new Pokémon type since Gold and Silver. And we're not done yet, let's take a look at that map again. Do you see that weird pink structure in the water on the east side? Its colors look similar to Sylveon's, don't they? Almost fairy-like. And what's the icon in the front? Sorta of looks like a Pokeball, doesn't it? Could this be the fairy-type gym? Maybe. Okay, we're nearly done here, but as usual, there's still just a few final details left. First up is your trainer. Now we already know you could play as a boy or a girl, but according to the recent screenshots, it seems you'll also be able to choose from one of a few different styles for each one. And as we speculated in our previous analysis, it's now been confirmed that you can indeed customize your trainer by trying on new outfits and accessories. And speaking of the trainers, if we take a look at this screen with the boy trainer, we can see someone who looks suspiciously like the girl trainer in the background, even down to the pink bag hanging off her right arm. The only thing she's missing is her hat. Perhaps the trainer you don't choose goes on to become your rival, or factors into the story in some significant way. 
Then we had this screenshot, where the black button icon confirms that Pokemon accessories and ribbons are back too. And if we zoom in on the corner of this screenshot, we can see that you'll once again find Pokeballs out in the wild that contain items, which isn't entirely unexpected, but it's nice to know regardless. Finally, there seems to be a pair of odd-looking things in the background here. If we zoom in, they almost look like baby go-goats. What are these things? It's really hard to tell. And with that, we're done covering everything we can dig up on Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. As usual, let us know if you missed anything by posting in the comments. Thanks for watching, and make sure to stay tuned to GameExplained.com for more on Pokemon X and Pokemon Y, and other things gaming too.